Welcome to the Do This For Life podcast with the OEV of Be Truly Faithful. I'm right here in your ear every Wednesday, encouraging ladies to do love, relationships, family, nation building, and good sex for life. Yes, this is where you get to do this for life, y'all. Woo! <laughs> so let's go into today's broadcast. All right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you for tuning in to today's podcast. So how can Black women stand together and win? Do Black women stay losing? Ways we can win when no one stands for us. Listen, I want to make this to all women. I really, really do. But unfortunately, we're having a hard time getting everyone aboard to help Black women deal with our plight. So if all we got is us then all we got is us. We are enough, okay? So as much as I want to make this to all women, I know that all women are not going to respond or stand up and rise up. So, but if they do, while I'm talking to my black sisters, that would be amazing. But at this point, I'm talking about us. I'm a black woman, so I am talking to black women. This is something that we struggle with. And so it's time to talk more about it and not just talk about it, but be about it and do something about it. So let me share what I mean. Okay, so y'all recently you may have or you may not have heard of the Shakesia Clemens situation with the Waffle House. And this happened in a place called Sarah Land, Alabama. And it's where three police officers came to the Waffle House. The police were called and it ended up being three white police officers. I think they were all male and they charged Chakesia with disorderly conduct and resisted arrest. Now there's a video that's showing this. Okay. The viral video of the arrest shows officers arguing with Clemens before pulling her from a chair onto the towel floor, which the floor in the Waffle House never looks clean. Y'all I, I am one who frequents the Waffle House and it, the Waffle House is not like a clean place. They have a amazing food in my opinion but the place is horribly clean i'm just gonna be real with you so they threw her onto the tile floor in an effort to handcuff her so in the process shakesia top is pulled down exp- exposing her breasts and she was like well what are you doing and you know what the cop said he says i'm about to break your arm that's what i'm about to do like who talks to a woman this way who talks to a black woman this way the way my husband would say it but literally how do you is this how we handle women So the video that's going viral does not show like what really technically led up to the arrest, but Clemens' mother actually told some news sites that the incident began when her daughter requested plastic utensils with her order and was told by an employee that it would cost 50 cents. Listen, I have been to the Waffle House for years since I was a kid and never once did they ever charge for plastic utensils. Never. So I don't even know where this 50 cents thing is coming from. Now, listen, I posed a question on my Tuesday talk with OV status in my group. Would you boycott an establishment for the mistreatment of black women? That was the question. Now, this is a pretty heartfelt pose for many ladies as it did get a little heated. So before I go on with how we as black women can win together, let me first read some of those comments to give you an idea on how this heated topic went down. And even before then, let me just say a little bit more about this case, y'all. What's interesting to me is how some people are kind of pointing out that the woman was still being filmed or recorded rather while her top was coming down. And I know we're in a culture of phone recorders. We're just recording everything by video. At this point in time, videos are the only thing that seems to be saving us black people. And even then it's not really saving us. So I can kind of understand the culture where we're recording instead of helping. At the same time, I think we do need to do more helping and not always recording so I just want to put that in there like that's where I stand on that because I know some people are saying man why didn't the, the friend get, you know pull her clothes up and whatnot I think it it it's really hard in those I've never been in that situation I hope I'm never I hope I'm never in that situation but it's like this has become a culture of recording and technically doing nothing but recording can be seen as doing something Okay, so I want y'all to understand that it's, I don't think the young lady was just trying to record and do fame and things like that. I think the young lady was really believing this was gonna help her friend. And, but at this point, y'all, it doesn't seem like the cops even care, right? The cops doesn't even care because they know you're recording and they still do what they do, right? All right, so let's get to some of the comments on the post. Here's exactly what I asked them. 
Would you boycott an establishment for the mistreatment of black women? Or do you really only want to boycott for black men? I saw such an outrage for the mistreatment of the men at Starbucks and a boycott was called for. But I have not seen the same call for the horrible mistreatment of Shakesia Clemens for her arrest at the Waffle House. Let's be real. How many black people collectively do you know frequent Starbucks versus blacks who frequent the Waffle House? But I would seriously like to know, would you really boycott an establishment, one that you really love if they mistreated a black woman? If we truly feel many don't stand up for us, my question overall is, will we stand up for us? Please be honest and let's chat on this. And here are some of the comments. There were a lot of comments, so I will not be able to read all of them, but I just want to kind of scroll through here and read. And again, if you want to get in on these hot topics every Tuesday in the group, and of course, any other day that we have, then go to workwithoev.com and sign up to be in the group. It is an amazing group of 14,000 women where we have these discussions where we talk about hot topics, hard things to deal with, and more. And we literally pour our hearts out on these posts and have these amazing discussions. I love it. So y'all need to come and join in. Now, one of the ladies said, I have never, this is after she seen the video and she said, I have never and will never set foot in the Waffle House. I was completely devastated watching that video and couldn't even view the entire thing. What was really the difference in that scene and any scene from Roots or 12 Years a Slave? And what will happen? I have not heard for a boycott. I have not heard for any overwhelming outcry for justice. Again, we continue to march and scream and demonstrate on behalf of the black man, but we are silent for the black woman. I refuse to share the video because because I don't want anyone else to see her like that. My heart is broken. One lady said, I'm not watching. She's just going to read the comment. Another young lady said, I absolutely would. It breaks my heart that we have other black women excusing the deplorable behavior and excessive force used by the police on this woman. I cannot bring myself to watch it because I feel things too deeply, which is why I don't watch a lot of TV or play video games. What I will say is they will never do a white woman like this and all hell would break out if she was a member of the LGBTQ community. I'm legit tired of this. Some more comments actually was, I have before and will do it again. I will never step foot in that joint again in my life. I may live up north, but my people are all in the south. Now, here's an interesting one here. I would boycott. However, until we can come together as a whole, nothing will change. If 25% is boycotting, yet the rest is buying, what are you accomplishing? Not a darn thing. Everyone says let's boycott. But until we reach Montgomery bus boycott type support, I'm giving everyone the eyes. She gave the eye emojis. And when she's talking about the Montgomery bus boycott status, many of you know that was with Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and all of those. And it was an amazing, amazing, and I mean so amazing. If y'all have never seen any footage on this or seen any movies where it is included in there, please research and look this up, how they collectively came together and boycotted the buses because of the racism and the disrespect that was going on on the buses and making black people sit in the back. And then if there was no room, they had to stand or they couldn't get on on the bus like black people's money was in green so black people got fed up and tired of this and they started boycotting and there was hardly anyone on those buses and they realized they were losing money at the end of the day racism is rooted in economics and we have to understand that that money talks so money is actually power here in this lifetime and it can be used for our benefit we'll get to that later okay now hands down another lady said i would and am boycotting the waffle house i stand for the black woman man and child and she came back and asked a question She said, I would like to hear from all the women who date and marry, I'll include that, black men and specifically say they are boycotting because of the inhumane treatment of the black woman who births the black man she is with. Disclaimer, this is my point of view, not the one who posts. And I told her this was an interesting perspective. I wonder how many would comment. Well, throughout the post, we didn't see many. (laughs) We just didn't see many whatsoever. As we go on, some lady said, I would definitely boycott that establishment. And I think what she's saying is that she would not necessarily boycott the entire Entire Waffle House establishment everywhere, like all over all of them, but she would boycott the one where things were done at. And another lady says, absolutely, I would. I love Starbucks and I haven't been back. I hate Waffle House. I don't know how people even eat there. So that's a no-brainer for me. But I also haven't been back to H&M. And I have, it's not hard to boycott anything, pretty much. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We actually had a young lady who was not a black woman. She says, firstly, I do not agree how this young girl was treated. But why didn't she leave when her friend said, let's go? Secondly, I don't watch the news or read the news. But I wanted to answer this honestly. I looked further into each incident. The men were just sitting at the establishment. She's talking about Starbucks right here. Waiting on a friend and had not purchased anything. Starbucks employee were in the wrong for calling the police two minutes after their arrival. The young girl had the police called on her for her and her friend acting belligerently inside the Waffle House in Saraland. Drunkenly 
yelling profanities at restaurant employees and threatening to return with a gun and shoot this place up. So wrong for arrest? I don't know. Thirdly, the men who were arrested at the Starbucks started started their own protest. The lady might still be sitting in jail or recent release, so that might come. Fourthly, I am all for following rules, regulations, and laws. Because of the multiple members of my family, I don't want to have their records. If you break them, then you deserve the consequences. But if you follow those and are still treated as if you didn't, then I side with the victim. victim. So I will say I defend boycott those who are wronged by the powers that be. So of course we engaged her. Many of us on the, on the post engaged her. It was a discussion post, so we engaged her. And basically um, I was inquiring of her if she was against the treatment that the black woman received in being arrested the way she was. Why was her behavior even mentioned? But that's neither here nor there. Another one said Waffle House agreed with the police actions. That's a corporate mindset. Starbucks didn't condone the employee's behavior nor the police. There's a big difference there. But are black people really going to stop eating at Waffle House? And someone came on her thread and said, no, they're not. Just like they continue to shop at H&M. She talked about this. They did boycott and not everybody. You know, it's basically what they, some who were saying, well, sure, I don't mind boycotting, but are we really going to stick together and do this? Because they're saying, hey, we stopped doing, uh, we stopped doing business with Papa John's. We stopped doing business with H&M. But as soon as things die down, we go right back to those old habits. These ladies actually have points. But during this post, one of the ladies came through and was talking against even Walmart and Target and said, we need to spend on purpose. And she began to share links to webuyblack.com. And we're going to talk about that in just a second because we're going to go over solutions as soon as I'm done with some of these comments. Another lady said, I will stand up for who stands up for me. Not saying that anyone deserves to be mistreated, but some black women are very disrespectful towards one another. Although I hate the way we treat one another, I still feel in the end I will stand beside a black sister. And someone responded to her and said, pardon self, does this justify maltreatment of black women? Also, white women are disrespectful towards each other as well, but they know how to band together and be best friends real quick if you come against them or if you want to protest an establishment. And I have actually seen that. I was a part of the La Leche League, an organization that is for um, nursing mothers. And I have seen people, I'm not necessarily saying my local establishment, but I have seen them have sit-ins for nursing when someone was put out for nursing their babies. I have seen them have a nurse in. I have seen them go to, whether it was restaurant, the airport, or and you, you all can look this up, or a business that put a woman out or women out for nursing their babies. They stood together and they stood together fast. It was primarily white women. There was some black women that was there who were black nursing moms, but primarily it was, wh- it was white women and they stood up and showed out and the laws were changed. Okay. So another one, and I'm going to move on my answer to your question. Yes, I would boycott and I am going to boycott. Who will stand for us if we don't? And that's primarily why I have solutions today. As soon as I read this comment, let's get it. When white women experience brutality, rape, etc., we stand for them. Yet when we experience brutality, abuse, etc., it's, well, she shouldn't have done A, B, or C. Like there must be a reason for maltreatment towards us. We did something to deserve such a reaction from the cops or whomever. Black women have stood for everyone at various times in history, yet no one stands for us. Even we don't stand for us, but I'm standing. I ain't eating no nasty, awful house. <laughs> I ain't spending $3,966 on bougie lattes. I ain't spending money with folks who got problems with my folks. No, I stand in solidarity with those who are the most abused, most undervalued, most often imitated. So y'all heard the comments and it's so many more. I just would not have time to read them. Now, how can we win? Did you hear many ladies saying they would indeed boycott the Waffle House? But did you also hear how some were on the fence about it or would not? It's okay because as I stated on the post, we don't need everyone. That's what I want everyone to know now basically not talking about standing out in front of places to protest and there are different ways to boycott because boycott is actually a form of protesting okay so one way that we're really talking about boycotting what i'm talking about is withdrawing support because that's all boycott means is to withdraw from commercial social relations with a country or organization or person as a punishment or protest so you as you see boycott is actually a form of protesting. So I'm not really talking about going out and marching and things like that. That is another way to protest, but I'm talking about actually boycotting, which is to withdraw support from the establishment, from the organization or whatever it is. Now on that post, I told them when those who were on the fence about it or just didn't want to do it because they felt like, well, you know, who's really going to do this? I said on the post, we don't need everyone. You don't need every single person in the world to boycott. All you need is a chosen few to do the work 
Who can those chosen few be? And that's what this podcast is about. Because I want you to think about Yeshua, you know, Jesus. He took 12 men and literally changed the world. He did that. Because after those 12 men, as I said on the post, were women. And after the women, thousands were being added to the rock, the church of Christ daily. So all we need are some black women working collectively. And that's what I want to talk about today. Solutions. We know the problems. We see the ills. Now let's talk about what we can do to actually work win with each other. Since many of us believe as Malcolm X said about us black women back in 1962, over 50 years ago, y'all, then this is what I believe we as black women need to do to win together. And I want to just share a small clip of him saying what he said about us, ladies. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected one, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. And as Muslims, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us to respect our women and to protect our women. And the only time a Muslim really gets real violent is when someone goes to molest his woman. We will kill you for our woman. I'm, I'm making it plain, yes. We will kill you for our woman. We believe that if the white man will do whatever is necessary to see that his woman gets respect and protection, then you and I will never be recognized as men until we stand up like men and place the same penalty over the head of anyone who puts his filthy hands out to put in the direction of our women. So now that y'all have heard that, you should be riled up in your spirit. You should be ready to get out there and not just demand and look for answers, but also to be the answer. So here's how I believe we can win together. I'm going to give you some practical things we can do to start now, to start now in winning together. Today, I'm going to give you six practical things we can actually do to win together, ladies. Number one, stop looking down on black women not like you. Some of the ladies who said they would not support a boycott of the Waffle House called out how the young lady acted and viewed her actions as less than being that she was asked to leave the establishment. I even saw some comments on social media on the way she was dressed and the way she talked. Listen, ladies, we gotta stop looking down on our sisters that's not like us. Do they have to articulate like you to be supported by you? Do they have to sound like you? in order to be supported by you? Do they have to make the same kind of money as you in order to be supported by you? We have to be careful that we're not acting towards our sisters as our oppressor acts towards us. Now, I'm not saying like, listen, I didn't see anything before that video. So I don't know exactly was, you know, how the lady was acting. I don't know if she was being belligerent or cussing or all of these things or cussing out the employees or all of these things. I don't know. I wasn't there and there's no video footage of that that I'm aware of. But even still, does that mean she does not deserve our support for her? Who knows of us supporting her will cause her. Let's say she did those things. Let's say she did all those things that people are saying she did. What if our support for her actually motivates her to rise up, to rise above, take responsibility for what she did do at the same time and empowers her to do better. Okay. And hopefully she does get some restitution off of what happened for the way she was treated. I hope she threw the pants off both the police department and the Waffle House and I hope she wins. Okay. So we got to stop looking down on women that doesn't have the same socioeconomic status as us. We got to, you know, stop looking down on women who don't have the same education as us. We got to stop looking down on women who may have children outside of wedlock or who may live in certain neighborhoods. Hoods. We got to stop looking down on them. But there seems to be some kind of pattern with the type of ladies that are mistreated. They seem to be women of certain socioeconomic statuses. It's really, if you look at that, it seems to be the same with men or if they're in certain neighborhoods, demographics, locations, things like that. So we cannot look down on women not like us. I do understand we can get tired of of women who we're trying to educate and we're trying to uplift and empower and they're not trying to hear it and they keep doing the same things. I can understand that wearing you down and get tired. I'm a mother. I, you know, 
know, sometimes telling my children something over and over again, it gets so tiring. I'm like, just do it, please. So trust me, I get it. We can get worn out, we can get tired, and we just don't want to fool with it. So I like to say that's when you lift them up in prayer and move on. But you still have the door open. You leave the door open for them to come around, right? Okay, our patience can be very, very thin. I get it, ladies. But my thing is just stop looking down on them. Try to educate them and motivate them and encourage them and empower them. And if none of that seems to be working, as they say, what they say, give them up over to the Lord and move on, you know, and still leave the door open for them to come. The door should always remain open. All right, two, band together and gain political power on the local home front. Did you know we have over 17 black women mayors in 2018? And I'm talking about many of these ladies are over major cities. I'm talking about heavy cities like Atlanta, Georgia, y'all. Tacoma, Washington. What is that? Rochester, New York. San Francisco, California. The District of Columbia. Gary, Indiana. Compton, California. Baltimore, Maryland. Charlotte, North Carolina. And did you know in my home state of Louisiana, we got three major cities here, including our state capital with three black women mayors? Yes, the state capital is Baton Rouge. Black woman mayor in Baton Rouge. Black woman mayor in New Orleans. And guess what? The first ever black woman mayor in my city, Shreveport. Shout out to Mayor Ollie Tyrell, by the way. What's up? (laughs) So look at all this black girl magic. Why am I talking about these different women who are now mayors? Because the massive turnout of African-American women in 2017's election was amazing to see on the local levels. And that's where it's at. We're so busy thinking of voting presidents in when it's really about voting on the local level as that's where power really begins so if we band it together as black women and put mayor keisha lance bottoms in atlanta in office what do you think we can do in other cities what do you think we can do on the local districts what do you think we can do in our areas if we band together and gain political power we're making moves then let me tell y'all something real quick when we think about President Obama's presidency, right? And people were saying, well, he didn't do this for black people. He did do, listen to me. In order to have political power, you have to, quote unquote, I'm just going to be real, buy politicians. How do you buy politicians? With support. Turn out, we got to turn, we got to band together and support. We got to choose someone, say, hey, I want you, we want you in office. And then we lobby for them. We give them money, we support them, all of that good stuff, and put them into office. But first, notice I said band together and gain political power. We must first band together. So after we stop looking down on one another, no matter our socioeconomic status and education, we got to then band together and gain political power on the local home front. We need to put more black women into office. We got to get them, more of us banding together and get these ladies on our side. We got to buy some politicians. Now listen, as the black race really needs to do this, but you know what? If all we got is us, what we say right now, right now, collectively, I'm not talking about because there are no, there's some men out there who support and we support them and all of that. I'm talking about collectively, y'all. If all we got is us standing up for us right now, collectively, then we need to band together and gain political power. All right. Number three, expect protection from men, period. Listen, this may come off as putting the blame on us and absolving our men of protecting us, but I want y'all to listen. This simply means stop entertaining men who will not protect you if it all went down. Did you hear the Malcolm X clip I played? There was a reason I played it. We should expect no less than what Malcolm X said from any man we allow in our lives. Do you ever see Muslim women being beaten out here in the streets like black women? Do you see them getting killed out here, black Muslim women? Do you see that? You don't. You don't see that happen with black Muslim women. You are seeing that happen with African African-American women women who live primarily in areas where a black church is on every corner, a a black modern day church is on every corner. And this is where a lot of these things are happening. A lot of these things are happening right in the same neighborhoods as many of these modern day churches. And again, as I said in my previous podcast, I'm not saying all of the modern day churches are bad. I'm not saying all of the modern day black churches are bad. What I'm saying is the system of the modern day church they operate in is under the Constantine effect 
<laughs> and so therefore it's corrupt. All right. It's corrupt. So there are some good churches out there, but unfortunately it seems to be more bad and not supportive of black women and protective of black women than it is for black women. So what I'm saying is expect protection from men, require it. It's a requirement to protect me in order to be with me. So even though I'm married, I expect no less from my husband. I was protected to a certain extent before marriage, but not like I have been in marriage. It was kind of hit and miss before marriage, you know, but I actually fare better since being married when it comes to being protected by men. Ladies, no matter how much we can do together and for ourselves, contrary to popular belief, we will need at least some protection from righteous men in this life and in this journey for getting where we need to be and winning together. Men don't necessarily have to be at the forefront of our movement to win together, but they do need to, at the very least, be protectors and supporters of us in this movement when they come to the movement. And that leads me to number four, stop looking to men and the modern day church to save us. Now, I know y'all like, didn't you just say expect protection from men? <laughs> now you telling us to stop looking to men and the modern day church to save us? Yes. Yes, I did say that. And it may seem contradictory, but hear me out. What I'm saying is we can call out men. We need to do this and hold them accountable, but we can't keep looking to men to save us and then keep waiting on them to change collectively. And then nothing happens with our movement. See, we get disappointed and down and then it's hard for us to gather ourselves and move collectively. We got to stop giving so much of our power away. Okay. So it's time for men to start collectively holding men accountable and empowering them. So that's what they need to be doing. We got, we know that, but we got to do what we got to do for one another. So yes, call out the modern day churches I've been saying and call out any men who are not doing what they're supposed to do when it comes to us. But we got to stop looking to them for what we can do for ourselves. We have to do for self. Even in, I'm not Nation of Islam, but one of the things they always talk about the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, doing for self. If you cannot do for self, you're going to fail in this life, okay? So we have to do for self. My thing is, as women, we need to do for self collectively. And FYI, I'm not anti-man, okay? I am happily married to an amazing man who supports me in all I do and I support him in all he does. He is one of those men who holds men accountable. He teaches men, encourages, and empowers men. He calls them out as well, but he also teaches and corrects and he protects his, and my husband is one who protects his own. He protects me and our children and he treats women with respect. So he is one reason I go hard in what I do because he backs me 100. We love empowering men and women. We love being there, being big brother, big sister, being mentors, coaches, counselors to men and women. This is what we do. What I mean is collectively, we cannot sit back and wait on and keep looking to men to save us when it's time to save ourselves. We must require their protection. This is true because if they want to be in our lives, they must protect us, right? We're not wasting time with men who won't protect us anymore. But if they do not want to protect us, then we must move ahead with the plan. It's not like you can can sit with us men. It just means right now we're moving collectively. And if y'all are not protecting us collectively and supporting us collectively, we are not going to be continue to look towards you and wait on you to save us. The most high has already given us all we need to do what we need to do. Therefore, I know in this movement, there are going to be some men who protect us. I don't know if it's going to be collectively, but I know there are because they have, there are men out there like my husband and people can say they're few and far between, but I'm telling you the more we start moving y'all, y'all will see this. Okay. Number five. Connect with black women influencers and work together to improve the state of black women. There are influencers all over social media and in your local areas. These are ladies who have platforms somewhere, somehow. And primarily they have the platforms they have because they speak out on issues of women. This must be done collectively. Like I've joined ranks with my best friend who is also an influencer. And I've also joined with some a few other black women influencers online who are all down for the betterment and evolution of black women. I can connect with more. So who are you connecting with? I personally mentor women who work with me and I'm actually working on a membership, like a big cis membership to where we discuss more on these kinds of topics. We band together and we come up with solutions for our ill. Now it will be for pay y'all that's coming up soon, but I promise you it will be very extremely affordable as the goal is to join as many women as possible together to encourage more on a personal level and work together to better self and then others. So I'll share those details at another time. But one thing that I'm saying is if we're connecting more, more black women influencers are connecting together. This is a way we can band together and do that gaining political power thing. But we got to band together. We got to work together to improve the state of black women. That starts with self-improvement as well as sister improvement. Okay. This is us. We can do this. We can join as many as possible together. So one way we can win together is to work together and share platforms with one another. I have a platform. You may have a platform. So you may know ladies that have platforms. Connect us all. Connect 
connect us together and say, hey, I got a, I got a sis podcast that I follow named OEV. And she does this do this for life podcast. And she's talking about some of the same things you're talking about. I think you all need to connect. I have been in inboxes where several ladies said, hey, OEV, I want you to connect with this sister because she's doing this. And we've connected. I did a Facebook Live with my cousin who works with divorced women. We're connecting for the betterment of of black women and we're going to do things together more often so so look at it this way if i'm connecting with this lady and that she's connected with that lady and then eventually that just keeps going around and we're all connected then we can do many things together and be more powerful together we are better together all right so i have already reached out and connected with other black women influencers and we'll do more of this as it pertains to winning together and making moves to stand for our women against the ills against us now in this one i want y'all to know when i said connect with black Black women influencers. I mean, primarily that's what we should do. If there are any other influencers out there, they want to share our movement and what we're doing and connect there and allow us to use their platform. We are all for that. We're not against that. Okay. I'm just saying we're going to depend on each other. That's what I'm saying. There are going to be men out there who allow us to use their platforms. Amazing. There are going to be other races that have platforms that will allow us to use it. Amazing. But just remember, we are primarily connecting with black women influencers so we can work together to improve the state of black women. And then when these people jump up and say, hey, jump on board and say, hey, we want to push what you're doing and share what you're doing, we're game with that. Okay. And last but not least, number six, organize our own organizations and support them. Let's organize our own organizations. Now, listen, this is something that's pretty much already being done in black businesses. Okay. But now we're going to like define this more. Listen, if we have political power, respect for one another, no matter our socioeconomic statuses and education or lack thereof, if we require protection for men who desire our time, if we connect with one another across the globe, if we hold men accountable for their ills while addressing our own, then we can tie all this in together and create our own organizations of power and support them and defund other organizations that don't support us. You see what I'm saying? Like if we're doing all these steps that I'm saying and y'all may have some other things that y'all think we should do as well. But if we're doing all this and creating our own organizations of power and support them while defunding the organizations that don't support us. See, that's how you boycott right there. If we do that, y'all, we can do this thing. Now I know many ladies have businesses and organizations for the better men and support of black women already. So I'm saying we need to patronize these organizations and these businesses. We need to help in creating more too. What kinds of organizations? Whatever organizations have needs and wants that we need and want. (laughs) Does that make sense? For example, we have ladies who have defense funds that need monetary help. You know, defense funds, legal defense funds. We have ladies who sell t-shirts for their causes or businesses. Ladies who do things like I'm doing right now, like podcasting. And they may need better equipment. And so they may need donations. We need to patronize. We need to help those ladies. Ladies who offer services to empower women, you know, patronize them. Black owned women business for hair products, clothing, speaking engagements, resume services, subscription services, books, TV shows that they're starting up, dance lessons, YouTube channels of empowerment for women, Kickstarters, Patreon accounts, food service, and more. These are organizations and businesses. So some of these will need donations. Others you just buy things from. Y'all get what I'm saying? That's why I said I know many ladies have businesses and organizations for the betterment and support of black women. So that doesn't mean just because they're selling something to make money for profit that we shouldn't patronize them. That it only needs to be some type of organization where they take donations. No, we should patronize and support organizations and businesses. So in other words, let's build and support our own organizations of the women who are working together in this movement who are actively working to better the black woman. The black woman is themselves too. So they may be actively working to to better themselves. They are our black women. They need our support financially. Does that make sense? Like you have makeup artists, photographers, videographers, counselors, mentors, coaches, event coordinators, whatever services you need or want is basically what I'm saying is look for black owned women businesses in those fields first and patronize and support them. If we do this more and more, the money will circulate within our movement. Ladies will gain financial power for themselves, for their families and businesses will be booming among us. Then we can buy more political power and pretty soon we can gain the respect, the power, the finances, the clout, (laughs) okay? And the support we need to do major damage to all our oppressors and win together and increase our net 
self-worth and self-worth along the way. We can do these things for life. Why am I talking about net worth and self-worth? Because oftentimes black women have the highest education in our race or among women even, but the lowest net worth. We have the highest level of education, but the lowest net worth. And our self-worth, we need to know how to love ourselves and all those things. This is true. But oftentimes success helps us in valuing ourselves more because we're accomplishing goals. We're like, yes, yes, I'm I'm doing something. It doesn't mean we should just value. I'm not saying we should not value ourselves. We don't have business or thing like that or they're not successful. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that progress oftentimes makes us feel better about ourselves. Does it not? Progress. Progress. Yes, yes, yes. Progress show. So basically what I'm saying here is we can do this for life do this for life and this is not to take away from our men especially the ones who support us but this is us getting up on our feet and helping ourselves before we go out and support another movement outside of us before we go out and support another modern day church before we go out and support another business that doesn't support us that doesn't stand for us before we go out and give away our time attention and money to men who won't protect us we do for one another we do for self this is how we gain power this is how we use that power and this is how we win together when others do not stand for us when you are in a position of power people have to take notice this ladies is a way to build a nation we can build our nations together okay loves hey well we did it again another podcast completed Thank you so much for tuning in. And also thank you for sharing my podcast with others to help and bring more exposure to the many issues we have dealing with us in relationships and in life in general. I want to thank Ben Sound for the music. I appreciate it so much. So, yo, I will be back here and back in your ear next Wednesday to make sure you are listening to what I have to say because I know it's going to be beneficial to you all. Don't forget, you can go to build-a-nation.com for your free PDF checklist on getting started and building a nation talked about building a nation today building up ladies so learn how to build a nation for yourself build-a-nation.com because what i'm trying to build with some of y'all like whoever's like-minded so go get that free checklist and see exactly where you are in building your nation now if you have an issue in your marriage relationship singleness or just in life in general reach out to me and set an appointment with me at workwithoeb.com Yes, that's work with OEB.com. So let's continue this discussion on black women, women together. And let's get this thing rolling because on my end, I'm ready, ladies. So share this podcast with as many ladies as you can. And may the doors of my heart remain open for it. Because I'm ready, y'all, to do this for life with some amazing women. Okay? Enjoy the rest of your week, fam. Much love.